Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been wanting to do this prepping on the cheap video for a while now. Just haven't had the time, but I'm finding it today. Today, we're gonna review the cheapest solar panels that I have ever seen. And I got these from Amazon. They're called Dokio solar panels. And what makes them even better, in my opinion, not having even taken them out of the box, is that not only are they cheap for what they are, but they're flexible. They're some of the lightweight, flexible solar panels, and they come in 100 watt each. And wait until I tell you how much I pay for those. But first I have to show you something really cool. I wanna show you a gift that my daughter gave me for Father's Day. Look at this thing. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it good or not, but this is a knife that she gave me. And look at this. Is this cool or what? <laughs> I just had to show that off. I <laughs> don't know why. I just think it's pretty cool. Let's open this box. Let me show you what these solar panels look like and hopefully they will perform. Because let me tell you what, whenever you get solar panels that are like the name brand, like let's say you get Opus solar panels or Dabson solar panels or Jackery solar panels or whatever solar panels come with whatever solar generators. Usually, from my experience, they are very high quality and very efficient solar panels. But why not go out there if you can't afford to spend four or 500 bucks on a 200, 240 watt solar panel? Why not go out there and spend a couple of hundred bucks on like 400 watts of solar instead of 200 watts of solar? You're getting twice as much and hopefully the efficiency will be just as good, if not just a little under where you're still getting the best bang for your buck. Let me stop talking and let me show you what these solar panels look like. So right now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to make a little bit of room out here because I'm working on a few household projects, but I'm actually very interested to see what these solar panels look like and to see how well they perform. We're going to go ahead and connect these solar panels to one of my mega solar generators, specifically the one that I use to power the hot water heater for my new kitchen. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, these are MC4s, which is great because I do believe that MC4 connectors are the most common connectors that there are in the solar industry. Let's go ahead and uh, take this protective film off. And look at this. This is what they look like. Let's see. Let's take them off nice and easy. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell you right now that I'm going to like these because they have these little grommets right here that you can use to hang somewhere and uh, have them be mobile. But another thing that you can do, and uh, maybe one day when I have an RV and it's running, I can go ahead and put these on the top of an RV. And what you can do is you can silicone them on there to where they will be semi-permanent. You can leave them up there all the time, but if you wanna take them off, it'd be very easy to take them off. Now let's take a look at the specs for these guys. Now I don't know how delicate these are. I'm not sure how much you can bend them. So I'm gonna be trying to be careful. But right here, we're looking at 100 watt. We're looking at 18 volts. And uh, I usually use the highest voltage that I can whenever I'm dealing with these so that I don't overpower any system that I'm putting it into. So. We're gonna go with 20.5 volts. And I'm gonna show you later on why this is important. And then we're looking at 6.5 amps. And it can operate all the way to negative 45 degree Celsius or up to 80 degrees Celsius. So it has a very good temperature range. Now, sometimes people get lost on this. So let me try to explain it the best way that I can. So if we're looking at, let's say 20.5 volts, per solar panel, it means that with specifically the Mega 3, the solar generator that I'm gonna connect these to, that solar generator is maxed out at 150 volts, which means that if I align these or connect these solar panels in a series, I can only connect up to seven of them together in series because that will give me about 143 volts. So that is very good news because I've got six of these solar panels. If I connect them all in series, I'm under 130 volts, which is well under the max that the Mega 3 
allows to come in as far as when it's being charged via solar. Now, when we take a look at the amperage, the amperage here says 6.5, which is also great news because when you connect solar panels in series, the amperage doesn't change. So that means that I can go ahead and get another six solar panels side by side connected in series and then connect those two systems in parallel and I will be under the 15 amps that is the max for the Mega 3 and I will be under the 150 volts. So this is a very nice number that we got 6.5 and 20. We should be able to get a whole bunch of solar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know all that jibber jabber that I was talking about, about the voltage and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and put that into practice. This is very simple to determine. That way you don't end up maybe damaging a solar generator whose BMS or battery management system fails. It's just something to get in the habit of doing. And this right here is just a very inexpensive voltometer. This thing will measure how many volts is going through the wires. And I think this costs like maybe 12 bucks, less than $20, I'm pretty sure, on Amazon. You can get these anywhere. And it is a great tool to have. So let me show you, for example, on one of these solar panels. And I hope that you can see this number here okay. But let me show you on one of these solar panels how these are... I think I remember reading 20 volts or 18 volts at the low and like 20.5 volts at the high. And I always take the high no matter what this says. If this says 18 or 18.5 and the high uh, that it stays on the back is 20 or 21, I always do my math with those numbers, but I like to verify with this. So check this out. This is just one solar panel. So just this one solar panel should be showing a voltage of between 18 and let's say 20. Let's say what it says. And there you go, 18.5 volts going through one solar panel. Now let me show you what I mean about getting these hooked up in series, how your voltage adds up, but your amps don't, your current doesn't. So to put these in series is very easy. It's already plug and play. All you have to do is connect these two ends together, all right, the positive and the negative, from one solar panel and then the other two positive and negatives one from each you're going to have them right here and you're going to be able to see that the voltage should go up to roughly twice of what it was before all right look at that it's at 31 or so so the voltage didn't go up as high but it's at 31 i'm guessing that the more sun that these get the higher that this number will be okay uh, so being that we're under shadow right now, that number is probably not as high as it should be, but that's why I use the highest number. So now let's go ahead and connect the third solar panel right here. See how easy it is? This is connecting them in series, okay? And there you go. And look at our voltage. We're all the way up to 40. Again, it's more than likely because we're under shade. So what we're gonna do is, is I'm gonna go ahead and bring these solar panels to where I've got it set up for them to be temporarily. We'll hook them all up, we'll see what the voltage is, and then we'll see what kind of power they produce going to the solar generator. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is temporary. Let's go ahead and hook all of these up, and then let's see what kind of power it produces because the sun is at a pretty good location right now. And now the only two connectors that we have left is going to be our two MC4 connectors one from one end, which is the male, and one from the other end, which is the female. Let's go ahead and check what the voltage is on all of these connected together. Here you go. We are behind one of the solar panels. You can see 115.3. So we could probably put more on here, and the Mega 3 would have no problem taking that voltage. But I'd rather just have six more solar panels along with these connected in parallel instead of in series. All right, so again, here are the two ends from the solar panel array, and here are the two ends from what I've got hooked up to the Mega 3. Let's go ahead and connect these, and then let's go ahead and connect it to the Mega 3 under the house. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is not too bad at all, being that the sun is not really in its optimal location right now. We are pulling in easily 400 watts from those six solar panels which 
really it's not too bad right now with the sun not being in the best place that it can be we're pulling in about 65 percent efficiency if not a little higher and you just can't beat that for 55 bucks i have to say so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave this hooked up i'm going to come back i don't know in about two or three hours when the sun is right overhead pointing directly at those solar panels and we'll come back and revisit this and see what it's at when the sun is where it's supposed to be so far I'm pretty happy with this setup well ladies and gentlemen I apologize it's about 1 30 in the afternoon and I came in here to see how much power we were getting in because the sun is at its optimal position but as you can see even though the sun was not at its optimal position before when we were getting about 430, 420 watts in, it's already at 100%. And as you can see, ladies and what gentlemen, oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, Victor is here. Victor, what are you doing here? <laughs> I had to move the couch. I'm sorry, it's been a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are new here, Victor is my adopted Russian son. I found him on the street one day and I had to bring him in. No, no, no. I found him <laughs> on the street one day. Uh, Victor, where's Michael? He's somewhere. Is he, I see him. Right, ladies and gentlemen, just a second. Hey, Victor, can we see Michael real quick just for a second? Hold on. Let me get the child grip. Anyways, take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like we've got a cloud in the way right now. We're getting 193 watts or 180 watts of solar in, and that hot water heater is consuming about 1,700 watts. One grandchild so, present. Oh, here we go. Michael. There's Michael, man. Michael, say hello. Say hello, Michael, man. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at all that hair. I think it's time for Michael to get a haircut. <laughs> he would not sit still. No sit. You don't like a haircut, huh, Michael, man? Say hello, Michael. Everyone's been asking about you for a long time now. Say cheese. <laughs> He's wondering, what in the world is this guy recording me for? What are you going to do with this? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, so obviously it's not because there was a cloud passing by. When I came out here, I took a look at this and I was like, that's why we're not getting that much energy out of these solar panels. Because the sun is no longer in the prime position. And uh, I apologize about that. Uh, Michael showed up and I forgot all about time. So in order to determine what the average solar that we were getting as far as input, we can look back that when I hooked up that Mega 3 along with these solar panels here, the ones that we're reviewing today, it was around 1030 in the morning. And when we went back in there and saw that it was at 100%, it was around 1.30 in the afternoon. So easily three hours. I'm not sure how long or how far behind that 1.30 in the afternoon time it got to 100%. But let's say it took three hours for it to reach 100% from 61% or let's say 60% to make it easy. So the Mega 3 has a battery size of 3,072 watt hours and it was at 60%. So what's 40% of 3,000, let's say? It's roughly 1,200 watt hours. So in three hours, we got roughly 1,200 watt hours of power minus however many minutes that reached 100% before I went in there at the three hour mark. So you can easily say that at the very worst, these panels performed at about 400 watts per hour for three hours to fill up that unit. I personally think it was a little bit more. Obviously it was, it was about 420, 430 when we were looking at it, but I think that it filled up to 100% a little bit faster than 400 watts per hour for the three hours. So in my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, this is definitely worth the 52 bucks or $53 that I actually paid for it. Not only are these solar panels a lot lighter than their counterparts, but they produce just as much, if not a little bit more energy from the sun than their counterparts. And by counterparts, obviously, I mean these solar panels here that have an aluminum frame and that are just a lot heavier and bulkier. 
and in all honesty, not quite as efficient as those lighter ones that are flexible. Now, how long will these last? I don't know. We're going to have to see. Definitely, I don't think that these should be left outside to hang out with the rain and such. Because although they're supposed to be waterproof, ladies and gentlemen, I did find a few of these boxes open and I just clipped them back on. Easy enough to clip on, but I wouldn't really feel very comfortable leaving these out in the rain. And if so, I would go ahead and take these little lids off and put silicone around them to make sure that no water can get in here. Now this part right here looks like it's the only part that can be infiltrated with water. Other than that, the MC4 connections over here, to me, they seem to be pretty sturdy. They all had an O-ring, which is what makes them waterproof. So the question is, would I recommend these solar panels? Absolutely. I think they performed very well for what they are. And in all honesty, had I been out here when the sun was at its prime angle, I'm pretty certain that we would have probably been reaching upwards of 500 watts per hour but even at 450 or so watts which is what i believe it averaged it's a great deal for a 52 55 dollar panel now i'm not sure exactly how much these cost now because as you know prices do change on amazon all the time i will leave these linked on a pin comment if you want to go take a look at them and i'll go ahead and put the current price as of the recording of this video up on the upper right hand corner of the screen so you can go check it out if you want to again i'm not taking anything away from the other solar panels that manufacturers of solar generators produce but if you can't afford a 450 or 500 dollar 200 watt solar panel then i think that these are a great option having said that ladies and gentlemen i'm going to go ahead and sign off now god bless every one of you god bless america i'm alaska prepper i'm out